All right, I hope you guys are ready for some rock and acid lab book notes. I know I'm excited. It's 9.55. I wish I could start these things a little bit earlier, but it's just never quiet in my house till really late. All right, so just open up your acid lab books uh, to the first page of notes. Buckle up. Make sure you can hear and enjoy. So the first page, we're going to talk about water, the special equilibrium. We're going to talk about the unique characteristics of water. I know. Let's see if I can spell this word right, right off the bat. All right, the unique characteristics of water. Water is actually pretty fantastic. Without water and these characteristics, we would not exist. All right, so water molecules are highly polar. I hope that you remember what polar means, but if you do not, which most of you probably don't, you will recall there is an oxygen and two hydrogens. The oxygen is more electronegative, so it pulls the electron towards it, making that side negative and this side slightly positive, creating two poles, a plus and a minus pole. All right, so that's what we mean by highly polar. All right, they are in continuous motion. All right, they are always moving. That seems kind of redundant. All right, water is less dense in the solid phase than in the liquid phase. All right, for example, ice floats in water. Now, I talk about this often, but if this wasn't the case, so here's our, here's our pretty little lake. The winter comes and the ice forms, and if it sank, uh, I know you love my pictures, if the ice sank here along the bottom of the ocean, we would get ice that would never melt. After a bunch of winters, we'd end up with blocks of ice that never melted and we'd end up with no water. We'd just have a frozen planet with no water on it and we would have no life. So it's 100% fantastic to us that ice does float when it's a solid. All right, water has a high, there we go, there we go. melting and boiling point it is much higher, I should say, it has a higher melting and boiling point than most other common liquids because of hydrogen bonding. All right, let's go over here and draw a picture. I'll, I'll just come right over here again. If this is negative, and there's another water molecule here. This is positive, positive, negative. There's going to be a bond between this negatively charged oxygen and that positively charged hydrogen. All right, and we call that bond between those two a hydrogen bond. We don't really have a new molecule or a new substance or anything, but we have a, a weak bond between uh, the two actual molecules. That bond saves us, well, it creates all these unique properties. Um, it saves our, our planet because when that ice forms, and these hydrogen bonds form, there's empty space in between the atoms and that traps air which causes the density of the solid to be less which causes it to float. All right, it's also what gives water its high melting and boiling point because before I can separate the water molecules I have to break this little electrostatic bond here. Now it's not real strong but it does take energy to break it. So we end up with a water over here and a water over here. And that would be gas that is completely separated. All right, polar and ionic compounds are soluble in water, but nonpolar substances are not. 